and it was early, Catherine. I was up at uh, 3.30 <laughs> to get here this morning. So forgive me if I'm a little bit slow in my narration this morning. I'm still waking up. I had a great spot just a bit further along, but uh, all the official media was there and I got moved on. So we've just started the tour. I'm going to go over the welcome to country again because um, I gave it during the, the uh, prelim. So I would like to begin by acknowledging that we're meeting this morning on the lands of the Gadigal people and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So it's the 26th of January. It's 5.30 in the morning. And 26th of January in Australia is Australia Day. But what does that mean? The 26th of January is the day that Captain Arthur Phillip first made landfall in Sydney Cove, which is over here to our right, and is now known as Circular Quay. And that happened on the 26th of January, 1788. It wasn't actually celebrated as a day of importance till 1808 when the emancipated convicts and the local colonists decided to have a party to celebrate the land that they were living in. <laughs> what did I miss, Lorraine? At this point, this is still New South Wales. It's certainly not Australia, and it isn't known as Australia until Federation in 1901. Prior to that, the land we now know was Australia was made up of six colonies, which were all self-governing. Good morning, Susanna, and everybody else who just joined. So the artist who's responsible for this display this morning is actually sitting over to my left. His name is David Miller. He comes from an area of northern South Australia, uh, quite a remote area. The sounds that you can hear are the tapping sticks, a traditional indigenous musical um, musical item, tapping sticks. Clap sticks is out. I'm going to see if I can actually get him in shot. Let's see if we can um, see this uh, musician.
the gentleman in the wheelchair is the artist. is all jostling for position here. Yes, Nicole, the artist of the projection. His name is David Miller. He comes from South Australia. try and get the opera house in the background if I can without moving in front of everybody. My apologies, Tracy. I'm not talking very loudly. Yes, Eliza, it's um, coming up to six o'clock on Wednesday morning. My husband is guarding my backpack.
thanks, Corinne, for providing that information. I'm just waiting to see if I need to move back to where I was previously standing. Thanks, Lorraine. Okay, I'm going to slowly move back to where I was standing. Are you showing me this Because I had a nice front row position. So we've got a bit of cloud up there. I'm anticipating a stunning sunrise. In terms of uh, the history of Australia Day, each of the uh, six states, which were then colonies, celebrated their own foundation day of some sort uh, for at least the first 100 years of our history. It wasn't until 19, 1915, actually, that uh, the first proposition of an Australia Day occurred. Um, and that was a mother of four servicemen who'd serve, who were serving in um, World War I. And she nominated a day basically to... Um, to raise funds for the servicemen. That first Australia Day was held in um, <coughs> July, in fact, July 30. And in the subsequent three years, various dates in July were celebrated as Australia Day. The states all finally agreed on having a national day, and that didn't happen until 1935. But it was 1946, in fact, that the first occurrence of an Australia Day by that name, on that date, as celebrated by all the states, happened. So Australia Day has, in fact, only actually been going for something like 76 years. Of course, to the Indigenous people, it isn't necessarily a day of celebration. To them, it's a reminder that this country was invaded by the British. And there's a strong push to change the date. Does that illumination appear to be going dark or is it just because the sky is going white?
Thanks, Karis. I don't know what this big crane structure is in the middle of the water. Uh, I suspect it's for some sort of performance, perhaps happening later today. There's quite a few events happen around the harbour over the course of the day. Uh, there's ferry races, um, there's a tall ships regatta and of course each local community has their own events that are put on by their local councils. Yes Tracy, that's the <laughs> Sydney Opera House. It's a projection and I couldn't tell you where it's being projected from. Probably probably either the building I'm standing behind or could it be from the one of the pylons on the Harbour Bridge. There are absolutely no ferries in Circular Quay at the moment. Um, what are we coming up to six o'clock? I would imagine that there would normally be ferries at this time <laughs> but everything changes on Australia Day. There's a ferry race happening at some point. Oh, good heavens, no, Tracy, it wasn't painted. The only time that Sydney Opera House has ever been painted was uh, some Greenpeace activists got up there and uh, did a bit of graffiti. I wish I could tell you more about the design. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find very much information on it. Thanks, Jen. I'm just going to pan around briefly and have another look at the Harbour Bridge because it's more visible now that it's lighter. Thanks, Susanna, you didn't have to do that. That building below the Harbour Bridge, just to its left, is the Park Hyatt Hotel and we're standing at the overseas passenger terminal which is thanks Susanna I'm trying hard I'm probably not being very effective This circular key. So sunrise is expected in about 20 minutes. I think it's 10 past 6 was the time, the official time. It's very moody with those clouds, isn't it? I'm trying to orient orient the image slightly higher so you can get more of the sky. Is there anybody on this tour who hasn't done a Hago tour before? I should have asked that a lot sooner, shouldn't I? In case you don't know, if in the middle of your screen is a button you can press to take your own postcard. Oh, I know the old regulars are here, Eliza. You guys know more about Hago than I do. I hope I'm doing it justice.
So just behind the Opera House is the Botanic Gardens. Let's see. Where those trees are over there is the Royal Botanic Gardens and I hope to do some tours in there one day. Andrew, there are those who carry on with a celebration blissfully unaware or deliberately unaware of the controversy. There are those who are strongly against the whole concept of Australia Day and really, really want more respect to be paid. And then there are those who try to find that happy middle ground between acknowledging the, the pain and suffering caused to the first Australians while also wanting to celebrate that we do live in a great country and everything that's fabulous about it. Um, it's a contentious issue. It needs more discussion. Uh, and uh, I don't think the debate is going to be settled for many years. Right. The flags have gone up on the Harbour Bridge and we missed that. Here we are. On the dawning of Australia Day, we have side by side the Australian flag and the newly acknowledged, if you like, Australian and Commonwealth owned Aboriginal flag, the rights to which were previously owned by the artist, but just yesterday were handed over to the Commonwealth to be freely used So that's, that's a great result. If you can imagine Indigenous sports teams having to pay money to use the Aboriginal flag on their, um, their sports clothing, for example, and that no longer has to happen. I think this is designed just to gradually fade as the day gets brighter. Absolutely, that's correct, Susanna. It's it's the date. It's it's the date that the First Nations people have the issue with. Certainly, Nicole. Let's have another look at the Harbour Bridge. I'll try and get up above the crowd a little. You're welcome. I can only hold that arms outstretched above my head for a short time. <laughs> okay, we're going to quietly wait for the sunrise. Please feel free to ask me questions. I have no more commentary to give. Here comes a vessel of some sort. What's that? Is that a ferry or a tug? I can't tell. Good morning, Neil. The protection, Beverly, of what? The, um, the Aboriginal flag, do you mean? It just means that the Commonwealth now owns the rights to the Aboriginal flag to be freely used by any and all citizens, which is as it should be. Good morning, Ashdeep. Oh, projection. Uh, it looks to me that it's fading. Um, the, the display was uh, scheduled to end at 6.30, which is only just over three minutes away. And I suspect that it's, it's looking like it just gradually fades as the morning gets lighter. That's a good way to put it, Eliza. I agree. I'm trying to pick the angle that the sun's going to rise. I'd say it's right behind the Opera House and we're not going to see the sun itself. Good 
Good morning, ladies. I am going to the Yabun Festival at midday. What would Ben Along think? Yes, for anyone who missed that reference, this is Ben Along Point, which is um, where Ben Along's hut was first built by Governor Philip. How do you get over there to the Opera House from where you are? You don't have a car. Uh, there's, today there's no cars in the city. But where I'm standing is at the overseas passenger terminal, which is on the west bank of the Circular Quay. And you can walk, in fact, we'll walk now a little around the edge of the quay and give you some different angles of the key itself and the opera house but I don't want to miss this sunset sunrise so if we walk over here the city does look lovely this morning Susanna I think I was answering someone's question though a moment ago where I'm going at midday the Yabun festival is Sydney's major festival for indigenous culture and it's happening at midday, starts at midday today at uh, a park a few kilometres outside the city. And it'll start off with a welcome, welcome to country. And uh, there'll be music and dancing. I imagine there'll be storytelling. And I'll stream the first hour from there. So I'm going to try and get into a position where we can see the Opera House and the sun rising behind it. These buildings here that we'll walk past to get there are the old um, stores buildings where shipping would have come in to the early settlement before the redistrib redist redistribution to the colony. If we come around here, just alongside this three-masted vessel, okay this looks like a good spot Yes, correct, Neil. So I'm going to go home and have a bit of breakfast, a bit of a rest. And we, then we're going to go into um, the suburb of Camperdown to Victoria Park, which is next to Sydney University. That's where the Yabun Festival is being held. This is a nice shot. Look at this. It's not a very good shot of the opera house from here. It's got a um, got something in the way. Perhaps if I move and move back a bit, we'll get that thing out of the way. Walking backwards on this thing that's on the water edge. I just got to look out and make sure I don't step back into the uh, into the car, into the harbour. <laughs> I've got my husband here guiding me like a sheepdog. Still trying to find that perfect sunrise shot for you.
walking backwards is always funny. Okay. Let's get a nice shot of this for you. We still have what five minutes, I think, till sunrise. I'm going to try and find out for you. Here we go, it's on the bow. Southern Swan. Can you see that? He's a good spot. Okay. What's happening? Sunrise at 6.10 a.m. Yes, that's right. Did you just... <laughs> he is deliberately trying to stay out of shot, Susanna. <laughs> Hang on. Susanna says hi. And a bunch of others said hi too. He's wandered off now. He's very camera shy. So that was a rather pleasant way to spend the morning, wasn't it? I feel like I should have brought along a, a book of poetry to read or something. I contemplated doing um, My Heart, My Country, Core of My Heart, My Country, but I haven't got it with me and I only know a bit of it. Does anyone know the old Dorothea McKellar poem? Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Beverly. Problem is, I need to hold the gimbal. I can't do it one handed, Corinne. Yes, it's one of my favourites. No. no. <laughs> Hobby, Hubby's offering to hold the gimbal. They want me to play the didgeridoo. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's assuming I know how to play the didgeridoo, which of course, no. <laughs> Let's have another shot of this boat, the Southern Swan, with the opera house in the background. I just got a low battery warning. Let me just see if I can get a cable and plug it into my gimbal. All right, thanks Eliza, I'll do it. Here we go. Core of my heart, my country, land of the rainbow gold. For flood and fire and famine, she pays us back threefold. Over the thirsty paddocks, paddocks watch after many days, the filmy veil of greenness that thickens as we graze. So then it goes on to I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of rugged mountain ranges, of drought and flooding rains. This is testing my memory. I love her far horizons. Um, what's next? I love her 
something C's. Oh my dear. Jeweled C. I love her jeweled C. Her something, something, something. The wide brown land for me. I think that's how it goes. I'm terrible. Poetry and memory. Ah, oh, there we go, Eliza. Thank you so much. Maybe I will learn it. Her beauty and her splendor. Oh my goodness, there's any pudding caps for me as well. Um, I really should print that out and take it along with me on a tour one day. It's um it's it's a lovely, lovely poem. I really like it. <laughs> I thought you were chastising me. Thanks, Aaron. I'm not sure how we're going with the sunrise. It's um it seems to be petering out, doesn't it? Well, while we're standing here waiting for something to happen on the skyline, this is a different view of the overseas passenger terminal. And there's an observation deck right up the top there that I'll go up to one day. It's not open at the moment. There's a, there's a bar there called Squire's Landing, which, uh, which funnily enough has uh, some kind of relevance to me. His name is Squire. My family name is Squires. And here we have the, the old next to the new with these buildings. Okay, back to back to the sky. Thanks, Andrew. And I'm deliberately not copying what she did. There's so many, so many aspects of Sydney that that really deserve being highlighted. And Elizabeth did a fantastic do job in what she did. I, I like to show it a little bit differently from the way that she did it. And I'm still exploring and still scoping. There's so much potential here. So next week, well, yesterday actually, I went out and about in Burwood. I know Elizabeth did visit Burwood, but the, um, uh, the lion dancers will be there on Saturday week for the Lunar New Year. I, I, um, I did have trouble with the signal there, so I'm going to go and do it again. That's okay, Neil. January 26 was the day that the first fleet under the captaincy of Arthur Phillip first landed in Sydney Cove in 1788. So that was the day that the British set up the colony in Australia. Back in those days, it was still called New South Wales. And um, we were just explaining the history of Australia Day. It wasn't really until 1946 that a... Um, a unified Australia Day agreed by all the states on January 26th and known as Australia Day was um, instituted. <laughs> I forgive you, Susanna. It's okay. I don't know what to expect at Yabun, to be honest, and we're really just hoping that um, we'll just go with the flow, basically. Yes, Beverly, it is now. It's 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 Australia wide, and each local council have their own celebrations. Citizenship awards are uh, given out. Sorry, citizenship is acknowledged. It's, you can't say it's given out. People apply for citizenship to Australia, and then the, the certificates are handed out on Australia Day, typically. That's a pretty sky right there. Look at that. Getting some reflection in the water. Hello.
How's that postcard? It looks pretty special. And of course, you all know that if you are enjoying my tours, please consider following me. Please consider sharing with friends. I'd love to um, be able to share the aspects of Sydney that I love with um, a wider audience. That sky's looking pretty special right about now. Thanks, Ellen. The sails on the Opera House, no, they don't move. Um, this was a very unique design, thanks, Joanne, um, by a, a Danish architect. And the original intent was that the acoustics would be um, enhanced through this design. I have to absolutely acknowledge the vision of the Australian government for implementing a design like this at this place because we could have ended up with something completely different. All right, everybody, I think you've heard enough of my voice for this morning. Inside the Opera House is rather lovely. It's um, furnished with beautiful timber and the shape of the way that it's laid out. Oh, we're getting some sun rays over there. I'm going to move slightly to the left. That's gorgeous. Look at that. How about we finish with me not talking? Please share the postcards. I really want to see these. Thanks, Beverly. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Well, I'm glad you all enjoyed it. And I'm going to say on this note, with these beautiful, beautiful clouds just coming into shot, I'm going to end this tour in about three minutes. Who was asking about the ferries? There's a ferry just going out now. Okay, we're going to have one last pan over to the Sydney Harbour Bridge and then I'll say goodbye. Thanks, Maria. Okay, thanks you all, and I'll see you again if you can make it in a few hours from now. Bye now. Bye.